Every day, about 83 million rolls of toilet paper are consumed worldwide. It's one of the most essential items in our homes. But how is toilet paper made? We visited a paper factory to uncover the process behind its production. Toilet paper was developed in 1857 by American entrepreneur Joseph Gady, who introduced it to the market under the name therapeutic paper. In its early years, it was sold in packages of pre-cut sheets, but a key innovation came in 1890 with the invention of the roll format, revolutionizing its use and making it more practical and accessible. It's estimated that each person uses approximately 100 rolls of toilet paper a year, amounting to about 21 billion rolls globally. That's enough to wrap around the earth multiple times. To reduce tree cutting, the industry heavily relies on recycling other types of paper. However, transforming rough, used paper into soft, white, absorbent toilet paper is a complex process developed over the last 150 years. At this impressive paper factory, high-quality toilet paper is produced using an innovative recycling process that gives discarded paper a new purpose. The cycle begins with the arrival of tons of paper from schools, offices, and universities. Every sheet that enters the plant undergoes a meticulous selection process, distinguishing between office paper, magazines, and newspapers that meet rigorous purity standards. Like alchemy, only the brightest and highest quality papers are chosen for this remarkable transformation. These high-quality papers have strong fibers and are easy to process into soft toilet paper. Once the paper is collected and sorted, it is temporarily stored in large bales. These compacted bales allow large amounts of recycled paper to take up less space, facilitating storage in the factory. The transformation process then begins, recycling about 200 tons of paper daily. The recycled paper is fed into a machine known as a pulpier, a large industrial tank resembling a giant blender. It mixes water and recycled paper at high speeds, breaking the paper down into its basic fibers. A large amount of water is added since the breakdown process requires the paper to be fully saturated to separate the fibers. This creates a watery suspension called pulp. Once inside the pulpier, Rotating blades vigorously mix the paper in water. This agitation breaks the paper into small particles, releasing the cellulose fibers that originally made up the paper. The process lasts about 10 minutes. As the paper is agitated, the cellulose fibers separate, creating a fibrous liquid pulp. These fibers are long and flexible, essential for forming new sheets of paper. After the paper has been turned into pulp, impurities or unwanted materials must be removed. The first cleaning step involves passing the pulp through a series of screens to filter out larger particles that didn't dissolve. These screens act like sieves, capturing impurities larger than the cellulose fibers, such as staples, plastic bits, adhesives, and other residual materials. Despite undergoing several cleaning machines, the pulp remains dark due to its primary contaminant, ink. A common technique for removing ink is flotation. In this process, air is introduced into the pulp, creating bubbles. Special chemical agents called surfactants are added to the pulp to make ink particles adhere to the air bubbles. As the bubbles rise to the surface, they carry the ink particles with them, forming a foam that is skimmed off. Once the ink, the pulp goes through rollers that squeeze out excess water, partially drying it to prepare it for bleaching. Rotating blades then cut the pulp to ready it for bleaching, transforming it from gray to white. The cellulose pulp, now recycled and impurity-free, still doesn't appear white due to lignin from materials like newspapers, which make up about 5 to 10 percent of the input. Removing lignin requires a chemical bleaching process inside a large tank called a bleach tower. Here, the pulp is treated with chemicals for a few minutes at a controlled temperature, achieving the whiteness needed for toilet paper. 
To give toilet paper its characteristic strength and softness, two types of virgin fibers are used, short fibers from hardwood for brightness and softness, and long fibers from softwoods for durability. The bleached pulp is then spread onto a plate and passed through a powerful dryer. Most of the water in the pulp is removed, allowing the fibers to bond and form a solid sheet. In less than a second, the pulp becomes a thin paper sheet just one-tenth of a millimeter thick. Once formed, the sheet is rolled into giant rolls called parrot rolls, each capable of holding up to 75 kilometers of paper. These large rolls are later reduced into thousands of smaller rolls, about 10 centimeters wide, as commonly used in bathrooms. The parrot rolls are transported to the factory's conversion section, where they undergo mechanical operations to cut the paper into smaller rolls. The process begins by unwinding the parrot rolls, preparing the paper for cutting and processing into the familiar toilet paper rolls. Perforations are then added to the paper to allow easy tearing into convenient-sized sheets, typically 10 to 12 centimeters long. Embossing gives the paper texture and thickness while enhancing its softness. In another part of the factory, 80 centimeter wide cardboard sheets are glued diagonally to form continuous cardboard tubes, later cut into 165 centimeter sections. These tubes are sent to the winding section, where two paper layers combine to create two-ply toilet paper. The paper is wound onto the tubes to form wide rolls. Once a roll is complete, an automatic blade cuts it, and the process continues with the next tube. The roll's end is sealed with glue to prevent unraveling, and a circular saw cuts the roll into 16 standard 10 cm wide rolls. The toilet paper is ready for packaging. Rolls intended for commercial use are individually wrapped in paper, while household rolls are packaged in clear plastic in bundles of 4 to 30 units. And that's how, in about 15 hours, tons of used paper and cellulose fibers are ready to re-enter society as toilet paper. Like the video if you enjoyed it and share it with someone who might find it interesting. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and activate notifications to keep learning.